My name is Aaron Fisher. I am um, I'm a mathematician, or I was doing mathematics at university. I finished my PhD last uh, last summer, and um, I've been aware of, of a theorem since the very beginning. Um, and I, w I knew that if I leave math, this is what I want to be working in. That was clear for a while. It's just the you know, it's the perfect combination of mathematics, economics, and politics to be uniquely addictive to me. <laughs> And then it's delightfully subversive, you know, it's, just, it's a fun space to be in. Um, and so after I graduated, I made a point to go to DevCon 1 and meet as many people as I could. And um, So that's where I first got involved in the community. The two projects I'm most involved with right now are Swarm and uh, Colony. So Swarm is part of the original Ethereum Foundation's project, which is a uh, distributed um, file storage layer, so distributing large files um, also could be used as a communication layer, but everything that the blockchain is not good for, like you know, images, movies. So the, the, the vision is that if, you down, if you're running a decentralized application, your username and stuff, that kind of important personal info would be registered on the blockchain, but everything else, the images, the templates, the JavaScript, all that, and it still needs to be loaded into your browser to, so you can use the app. And that shouldn't come from any server, it should also come from your peers. And that sort of, that layer is Swarm, di distributing and hosting all that content. Um, and the other project um, is Colony, which is a very exciting uh, project as well. It's about how do we use the power of this new blockchain to coordinate amongst ourselves and work together, collaborate on projects. Um, and even you know, run our little companies together, make money together, whatever it is we want to do, to have a really meritocratic way of governing ourselves and doing projects. Um, so, in a very flexible way, you can work. It, it, you can put in as much effort or as little effort as you want. But if you do a lot of work for your peers and they like what you do, your influence in the community starts to grow. Your reputation starts to grow and. So it's a very flexible and dynamic work environment, but entirely you know, without bosses, so to speak. It's all just you know, peer groups. There's many ways I could answer that. On the one hand, even just having a, um, a task system where each task has a little bounty, and if you work on that task, and submit the work, you get paid out that bounty. Um, that's a very minimal system, but that's already of interest to several large companies because it's a flexible system. You can, you can separate out tasks, farm them out to internally within your organization, a private chain, and you can make better use of your workforce because it's far more flexible. It's no longer every person has a role in a job and that's all they do. They can pick up work as they are available and um, often it helps, it could help perhaps the company find unused talent, unused resources. So we get interest from that side. Um, and that is before we even get into the whole decentralized governance and reputation based systems. It's also good for you know, us entitled millennials when we think we just want to, oh, today I'll do some work. You go online, find some task, work on it, get paid, but tomorrow I'll take off. You don't want, you know, we no longer care for these careers for life stuck in a dead-end job, so the kind of flexibility is valued on both ends these days, both you know, from people trying to do work and, and, and from people who are looking to get work done. It's, you know, there's, there's companies right now that do sort of task, I think task rabbit and some, you know, that here's a bit of work and somebody in India picks it up and submits it to you, that kind of structure, but we're thinking you know, that should not be a centralized platform. It's, it's all it is people wanting to do work, people wanting work done, let's, let, let's get them together. Um, now for Colony, I'm working on the governance uh, system. So the idea that to how do we actually coordinate amongst ourselves? How do we come to decisions? What do we do if there's disagreements? Um, and yeah, that, there's a lot of open questions, of course, about that. But, our goal is to um, not be just plutocratic, so the person with the most money buys the most tokens and has the most say. It should really be meritocratic. So if you're 
good at what you do and your peers like your work, um, then you will earn a reputation and with that reputation you have a bigger say in the direction of this project. Which also means if you start a project and other people join in and do a lot of work and you do less and less, your, your own um, influence will diminish and other people's will grow. It's no longer yours, it belongs to whoever is the most involved in it. So um, we're very excited to see where you know, those kind of projects will go. Our focus right now is a task management interface, sort of if you know Asana is a common one, so you do tasks and can assign them to people. Here we can, we, what we, we add is you can assign bounties to tasks, um, which would be tokens that could be paid out on a blockchain if somebody does the work and the blockchain does the entire accounting so you could see who did what at the end of the month. Um, and we're going, targeting our first, uh, we're targeting a, like digital agencies first, groups with a small number of employees who are used to farming out work to a lot of freelancers and it's also work that can be submitted online so it's all it's you know it's a very close fit starting with that um, but there was to be a hierarchy you know it's our task we offer it to you we assign you to the task if you do the work we accept the work so just to get this whole suite of task management with everything being accounted for on the blockchain and all the payments perhaps being accounted on the blockchain do that first and then slowly grow and add more and more elements of decentralized control. We're not going to go full DAO straight away because that's a really difficult thing to do and we sort of you know, want to be careful and sort of decentralize bit by bit. And as I said, there's definitely a use case for a blockchain-based task management, even in a hierarchical sense, just to make your workforce more flexible, even if it's just within your own company. It's, it's the flexibility of you know who does what and when and the accounting is done automatically for you. So a few of the things that motivate me, one of them was the, the phrase, the internet without servers. Because when the internet started, I, it was this amazing new, you know, we called it cyberspace because it was completely disjoint from the real world. You know, every, it, everyone was just equal on this playing field. Like there was no difference between someone in Hungary and someone in the States and someone in India. It's just like, oh, another person is somewhere online. And um, then over the early 2000s until now, more and more of the services got closed off. We have all these walled gardens, the Facebooks and, 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 and uh, you know, the, I don't know, WeChat, whatever it is. Everything is a closed uh, group. And, it, and everything is, I don't, I, I really dislike the control that these groups have. Like, I want to share stuff with my friends, I don't want to share it with Zuckerberg. And, and the other element is I don't want, you know, my sister recently sent me this link, say, here, this is a great documentary, you should go watch this. And I click the link and says, I'm not allowed to because I'm in the wrong location. And I said, what do you mean I'm in the wrong location? I'm on the internet. So the way these technologies have been sh shaped in the past, 15 years, it's become a very balkanized place. Everything's being broken down. They deliberately are no longer interoperable. Like, you know, you either put your photos in Apple's box or in Facebook's or in Google's and they don't want to interact. Um, so that's kind of a breaking of what the original promise of the internet was. And coupled with this sort of really spooky espionage that's happening, like we've become the product. And uh, so I'm hoping that with Ethereum underneath, we can now actually take the net back to what it was supposed to be. Um, maybe I should add a little note. The reason we ended up where we are today is because of a lack of um, micro payments. Right? The reason companies like Google and Facebook spend so much time spying on us and trying to get as much information about us as possible is because that's the only thing they can make money of. I, that's become the product. But if, um, if I can write articles and everyone who reads my article pays me a fraction of, of a cent, then I no longer have to worry about who they are and try to harvest that data and repackage it in some way that I can sell it to advertisers because that need sort of disappears. And my hope is that you know, we get back to a level playing field where everything's interoperable, where we're no longer spied on, um, 
Um, so that, you know, that really motivates me. But at the same time, I realize that's only such a tiny little part of what this revolution can do. It's just like websites. Like, <laughs> it can revolutionize banking. You know, I've got the people talking about IoT and what that can do for you. And then there's just so many projects, and I don't think we even know ourselves where this is going because the real value proposition is in the synergies between all these different uh, services rather than a single one of them. No, that's not going to happen. You're not going to get people to leave Facebook by explaining to them that they shouldn't use it. I, I know because I've tried. <laughs> it's like, now everyone says, it's so convenient, they stick with what's convenient. So it's not about you know, trying to get people to switch because of some political reason. It really has to be about ease of use. But I, I think um, there is really, there will be services that are just better things we can't do right now, and people will end up using Ethereum without even knowing it. I mean, so here's the thing, like right now you can video chat anyone all over the world. Like we could sit here in Shanghai and have a video chat with someone in Brooklyn or even someone in, in, in Johannesburg, but try to send that person 25 cents. It's very difficult and expensive and slow and not just can you do these things with Ethereum, when you have like Ethereum and Swarm, you can use the exact same communication link to send the payment and the video. Like imagine what you could, what you could do when you have that kind of a possibility where you send video one way and payment the other and it's on the exact same payment channel. <laughs>